I have an idea. Let us finish what we have begun. Yes, yeah, so oh yes, back again. I could not leave my hands off of the Kazarkin. I felt like the last video was running a little bit long, so I decided to pull some of those more individual models off to the side for some additional details. We'll be talking about rusty floors, a bomb blast vest, and a camel cloak. So, let's get into it. Additional features. I've got the camel cloak to take care of, and it's already been given that same gray processing. So you can see I'm going in there with black. But I have a word of advice. When you're painting a camouflage pattern on a miniature, paint it a little oversized. Definitely go online, get inspired. There are a lot of variations on camo patterns. But if you try to paint it to scale, it looks very confusing as intended, right? It's camouflage. It's supposed to be hard to make out the object. So you're going to have some trouble with your shading, highlighting, being able to see the figure, etc. So I'm going to blow the design up a little bit first adding some uh, blackness, some murky black strings. Next in line, I'm adding some gray castle. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this one. I want this camo pattern. It needs to, you know, kind of fall behind and in front of itself. Of course, I can always go back to my black tone, paint things back in place, but yeah, just laying down thick coats of gray castle. Kind of eyeing it up. Just do it to taste. Yeah, make things seem like they're crossing over a little bit. That's very helpful to have some of those intersections. Yeah, let me just jazz this up. Not too bad. Decently confusing. Just going to get some dark tone. It's your standard black tone from the Army Painter. Give this an all-over coating. That'll help to bond all these colors together and marry them to the surface. And to keep things somewhat simple and quick, I've got more of that gray castle. I'll be going in. I've added just a small amount of black to it. You can see it's, it's diluted. Yes, it's semi-transparent. I'm starting to pick out some of these folds, just a very, very thin coat of paint. You can still see the texture underneath, but it does give you know, a very slight lift to that surface, slight amount of dimension. And again, you know, just like the wash helped to kind of more deeply attach the camel pattern to the cloak, you know, this, this also helps to bond things together. And while I'm at it, why don't I just go in with a little bit of diluted matte black. That fits very well into the shadows of these folds. Yeah, I like it like that. But really simple. I'll just carry out some edge highlighting, a little bit of uh, highlighting that we already saw. This shading looks nice too. I think I can call this camouflage cloak good to go. And there also happens to be a man with a little bit of a blast shield. That are some extra weight. So I have some leather brown. And you can see I'm pulling this in. I'm, I'm uh, applying it with a very streaky result in mind. A lot of parallel horizontal lines trailing off into the shadows and let's also use fan favorite Castle Grey still making my way through the fanatic paints and trying to give them all a good run I'm enjoying Castle Grey but I've mixed that with a leather brown go apply you know this kind of the same texture but a little more to the point you know a little more forward facing 
see so just you know kind of rounding out the front of the chest building things up as such not bad now I'm just going to give it a generous helping of strong tone really maximizing out on the glaze like consistencies as well as its ability to sink into the crevices and that's why I intentionally left some of that gray black showing through Let's see as the the brown tints over it, it just creates deeper shades of brown. Let's round some of that off with pure gray castle. Very limited amounts here and there. I'll lift and drop the brush. I still want to continue to imply that leather texture all the way through. Just a trace amount down the chest. Yeah, just like so. I think I can call that good. I like the amount of lift going on. Yeah, just try to be very sharp, limited with the amount of castle gray. You know what? One more thing I could do. Let's see if this works out. I'll take some black. And, you know, just kind of leaning into more of the illustrative side of things, I, I know there's going to be some more, you know, this is, this is padding, so there's going to be some kind of deep crevices, you know, some heavier folds that are going to create more, these kind of cracks off to the side. So if I add a little black, it you know, just looks more right to me, a little more deepened and textured as a blast shield should be. Try not to drag that across the middle too much and when I do it'll be a very diluted amount keep it towards the bottom yes this I like oh yeah and for that final touch I'm going to be using some of the new rust effects from War Paints Fanatic first laying down some dark rust push it into some sensible areas, push it in these crevices and at the base of this metal handle. I'll sweep my brush off, dab it around. It's going to dry with you know a nice regular effect, so I want to make sure that I add on to that with my furious stippling. Don't go overboard, just lay a trace amount in place, let that dry, and see what happens. Okay, working right along, I have some diluted black. You can see I'm drawing out them creases, Just making sure to line those out. And additionally, let's bring some fresh rust into the picture. Applying it much the same as the last layer, but not covering quite everything. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't even dried yet, and I already really enjoy this rust variation. There's a slight amount of texture inside of this paste, so if I pile it up, like, I could see myself using it as a very fine sand, just priming over it. If you lay it on very thick, but you can see I can kind of create mounds like that and then dab away from it. I don't want to overdo things here, but with a wet, wet brush, I can dab away from it. Let's capture some footage on the old sniper as well. You can see, I mean, I have this stippled gradient which you know creates a lot of variation underneath so it's it's kind of hard to make out that this rust effect actually has a lot of different tones coming out of it as it as it dries it creates small variations within itself. You know it's it's very sensitive to how thick or thin it is. Yeah, you get a nice, a uh, lot of fun variations from thick and thin layers of that rust. I like it. For the power cables on the hotshot LAS guns, I first laid down a base coat of molten lava and then accenting where the bends are. I'm just blending it up with some lava orange. I'm doing this in a few layers so I get a good amount of saturation and brightness. That pure orange tone. And then for my own stylish touch, I have Imperial Navy mixed with some black. I want to create a caution-striped uh, 
power cable, but I want to break away from tradition and the usual evenly spaced yellow and black stripes. We'll go with orange and a very deep blue. And I'll leave a great amount of space between the deeper stripes. This adds a little bit of visual interest, makes things a little different. It's less work. <laughs> it's, it's easier to do it this way. Yeah, just uh, large spaces, small stripes. And then very carefully with a white line, draw that glistening, shining uh, reflection in place. Press very lightly. Remember to lead the, lead the brush along instead of trying to draw like a pencil -y. So I'm laying the brush and leading it along. Yeah, just like so, to kind of add a shining accent to my power cables. And there you have it. Ready for battle? And the deep bond of friendship that only a life-threatening situation can forge. Thank you for tuning into this video. I'm very excited to be playing Kill Team. Seems like a very fun set of rules, although very, very limited in the list building. But there's still enough there to enjoy. So I'll be playing a campaign out with my friends, and I'll be documenting my uh, games and such on Patreon. And the War Journal. So, thanks again for your support on Patreon. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe. I'll wait. Thank you. And until the next time we meet again, remain unchained.